Rev up your engine! Well, no more cheap pickup trucks. It turns out that the base Chevy Colorado, which was the last pickup you get in the United States for under 24 grand has now been axed. Now it was only the only one for a month because Nissan got rid of their four cylinder frontier which was also below 24 grand. So for one month the Chevy Colorado was priced at under 24 grand but they've given up with that. Now they only sell them for a lot more. 26395 after delivery is now the cheapest Colorado. Now I wouldn't advise someone to buy them anyways. They're not that well built but at one point in time they were for a whole month the only one under 20 $24,000 new and now they aren't anymore and really the Colorado as it stands now it's only 800 bucks cheaper than the lowest priced Toyota Tacoma which is five times the Chevy in terms of how long it's going to last how cheap it is to maintain so hey, they should have lowered the price of them more not raised them now they're even harder to compete against Toyota because they're almost the same exact price for a vehicle that isn't like I said maybe one-fifth of what the Toyota is but they are redesigning the grid and have a different tailgate design you know they keep trying to have form over function they look good yeah it really snazzy looking look at the colors right you see the ads on TV oh I love that ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah let's talk about reliability people you can't because they are well they actually did if you remember those Chevy ads a while back they had and they were saying they were more reliable than Toyota's but then they had to pull the ads because everybody's saying what a line of baloney that is and they did pull the ads I mean you can lie but a big lie like that even in an advertisement is going to get caught out and they had to pull those things off the air. Rock by 79 says Scotty is the Toyota Tacoma four cylinder 2.7 liter engine a good engine. Oh yeah they're excellent engines those 2.7 liter engines can run and run and run my son's got one he bought it used he loves it he's got no problems with it they're great little trucks and that's a very good engine I mean he got the, that too he didn't get the V6 because he said you had to pay too much for the V6s and the fours basically can pull about the same amount of weight there isn't all that much difference and they get somewhat better gas mileage and they're very good engines they can last a really long time and they don't have any problems just change the oil every five six thousand miles and it might last you basically forever Eddie Keaton says Scotty got no five Civic new clutch 300 miles it intermittently shutters when I downshift into second gear and when I take off the guy did a crappy job on your clutch what he should have done was either replace the flywheel or resurface it Hondas as they wear the clutch wears out and hopefully you change the whole thing a kit not just the plate you change a clutch kit that comes with the plate the disc throw out bearing everything you need you're often better to either replace the flywheel or have it resurfaced because if you put a new clutch on an old worn flywheel which is no longer perfectly flat it's going to do that exactly it's going to shudder whoever did the clutch job did a crappy job now uh take it back a lot of guys they're not going to stand by and they'll say oh it works fine oh shudder is normal they'll give you a lot of baloney but it wasn't done right if it shudders it should never shudder with a new clutch but I'm assuming he didn't do the flywheel and if it's worn it's just like putting new brake pads on rotors that are all warped it's still going to shake because the rotors warped but on the other hand if it works and shifts eh, it's not going to hurt anything it'll still run quite some time Sean Holstrom says I got no six silver rod I replaced the knock sensors and the check engine light cleared but it keeps coming back why is that all right first of all if you ever replace knock sensors they're piezoelectric cells they're very very technologically advanced for that vehicle buy the OEM sensors do not go and buy some Chinese knockoff they don't work half the time now let's say you bought the original original equipment factory sensors and it still doesn't then either you got a wiring problem between the sensors and the computer or your computer's got a problem 14 years old could be the computer I've seen them go bad but do check the wiring pray it's just the way because those wiring things only have a five volt reference signal not much power and any little bit of short or corrosion will make them act up Aiel Rogers says Scotty do new Tacomas still have issues with rusting frames no Toyota fixed that ages ago they just didn't coat the frames right and they rot away but they can be fixed I mean if you watch my old video about fixing a frame I got one free from one of these companies that sells online auction things I use it for videos and I welded up the frame with some sheet quarter inch steel and that was I don't know six seven years ago he's still driving the thing south of Boston and it still goes down a road so I did a decent job fixing it but no they haven't had problems for ages it was just a particular few years that if they got in salt water areas they would rot away like if you have them in Arizona or New Mexico they had no problem problems because it's so dry there they didn't rot but they haven't had that problem for a long time Nicholas Mazzola says Scotty what are your thoughts on the new Ford Bronco coming out on OJ Simpson's birthday 
<laughs> yes, it is. It's just a joke. I mean, it would be rather ironic if it was, you know. <laughs> uh, it's another sales thing, you know, to bring the name Bronco out. And hey, I guess they could use anything. I don't know if that's a joke or not, if they actually are doing that. You know, I mean, realize when they were chasing after them, they were only going like 20 or 30 miles an hour on a highway. It was kind of insane when you really think about the whole thing. But it gave the Bronco a name. You know, everybody remembers the Bronco. <laughs> These days when people are trying to sell stuff, all they care about is a name, you know, like the, the Jeep Renegade, you know, Renegade that they advertise on TV. Well, you know, that's a Fiat 500 four-wheel drive vehicle. It's nothing to do with Jeep, but it's got that Jeep name on it. So <laughs> what's in the name today? Well, sometimes not much. Stuart Levin said, Scotty, I have an O2 Lexus RX 300. I have a vibration when I accelerate. What can cause it? Well, the most common thing is they've got those dog bone motor mounts on the top. And a lot of times the rubber rots. Open the hood, you see on the passenger side, this said dog bone motor mount because it looks like a dog bone of dog bites, right? And each end has rubber bushings. If they're rotten, go buy it. You can do it yourself. You just bolt off, bolt on. You don't even need to jack the engine up. Very simple job. Pray it's that because if it's not that, there's lots of things can make them judder. You could have other worn motor mounts that cost a fortune because you got to jack the engine and transmission up. You can have a problem with uh, fuel injectors making it shudder a little bit, but a lot of times it's just that dog bone mount. They break all the times on those, and they're not that big of a deal changing them out. I can change them out in three minutes and buy one for maybe 80 bucks. Brent Roll says, Scott, you often insert switches into a car for parasitic drain. Why not splice it at the starting and shut on off of the car? I don't because many cars are wired with computers and realize that that doesn't work. I'll give you a perfect example. A couple weeks ago, I had a, a big Chevy Tahoe and the back AC wasn't working. I tried doing that. The fan wouldn't work. So I tried, oh, wire it in so when you turn it on, it's on, and when you turn it off, it's off. So I wired it off the ignition switch. And guess what? When you turn the car off, the stupid fan in the back wouldn't shut off because of the relay system. So I had to put a toggle switch in. So the toggle switch would turn it on and the toggle switch would turn it off. Cars are very complex these days. There's lots of computer feedbacks and relays and things. And you can't just wire to an ignition switch like you did. In the old day, we used to do that all the time. We'd wire if an AC system didn't work right. We just wire the compressor to the ignition switch. So the compressor would run the whole time. No one cared. But these days, it's all computer run. You can't do it. It's just too complicated. Often when you shut the car off, it'll continue running or it'll keep blowing fuses because you have too much power on a wiring system that was only made for a maximum amount of amperage. You're adding extra amps and it screws the whole thing up and keeps popping a fuse. Things are not as simple as they seem anymore, if they ever were. <laughs> So Terrence Vacana says, what should I do if there's oil in my coolant? Run! <laughs> That's bad. Now, often it's because the head gasket's blowing. It costs a fortune to replace a head gasket on any modern car. You might get lucky, and it could be like sometimes the intercoolers break, and then the oil and water mixes. So if it's transmission fluid now, like in a GM, you got a transmission cooler that cools the transmission fluid, which is in the bottom of the radiator. It's supposed to be separate, but sometimes they break, and then the transmission fluid gets into the radiator coolant, and that mixes. Now, all you got to do is replace the radiator and flush out the transmission fluid to get the water out of it, because some of the water is going to get in the transmission, too. So you got to figure out where it's coming from, and pray it's not a blowing head gasket, because that costs so much money. These days, most people just get rid of the car. You could try a sealer. Sometimes those sealers, like bars, head gasket leak, will work. You never know. Worth a try if it's an old junker. Zuni LG says, Scotty, have you ever been caught speeding? I've never been caught speeding. I've been caught for other things, like going over a double yellow line and stuff, passing people on a motorcycle. But uh, I've never been caught for speeding because I kind of keep my eyes around and I look around. And I mean, uh, when I was in a motorcycle, a lot of times I was speeding like a maniac when I was a young kid, but they're extremely fast. Plus, they can go through fields where cars can't, so I would just escape. <laughs> I've done that when I was young. I don't bother anymore. I pretty much stay within the limit. You know, if the speed limit's 60, I might go 65. If it's 70, I might go 75. Stuff like that. And if I'm going to go really fast, I'll generally take a car to a racetrack. Man, everybody knows me. They let me use their racetrack, so it's fun then. But I've never been caught for speed. Now watch, they're going to start chasing after me after I say this. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!